Hi guys, my name's Doug. Welcome to my messy garage. In today's video, we're going to be working on the Range Road RR602 logging trailer. I guess we could kind of call it a logging sleigh today because we're testing out the ski kit. With 13 inch wide flat bottom skis, the trailer has a little bit of a directional control issue on compact snow or if you end up on a little bit of a side hill, it tends to want to slide down. Follow along as we come up with a pretty neat little solution to that issue and greatly improve the directional stability of the logging trailer with the ski kit installed. Thanks for stopping by, appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoy this one. Here we are in the messy garage. I'm somewhat in the, uh, shall we say, break a few eggs to make an omelet stage of a uh, substantial reorganization, hoping to uh, make myself a little bit of space in here for working. Anyways, the project at hand is the Range Road skis. These skis have had uh, one trip, well actually two trips across a paved road that had some snow on it and you can see uh, screw heads are kind of worn off a little bit and the uh, the plastic well i wouldn't say it's compromised by any means it definitely has a few scuffs on it but what we're going to try and do to, to compensate for the, uh, the fish tailing that we were seeing in the video that uh, i just finished showing you is we're going to put these otter legendary sled sleds and shelters no affiliation guys I just I bought these at my local uh, BRP dealer but what we're going to do is we're going to take this high fax set and we're going to put one high fax strip in the middle of each of these skis one advantage is that uh, anytime these skis are going to be drug over some uh, bare pavement the high fax which will be replaceable will be uh, will take the brunt of the load and as you see we got six of them here only need two and my cameraman needs two so that'll leave two spares that I can put on at another time uh, the big advantage to the putting the high facts one strip down the middle we're hoping it's going to provide some substantial uh, improvement in directional stability I have to admit I was pretty impressed with how this the trailer did for the most part uh, I had to kind of fishtail a little bit to get it to really swing out for the most part straight and level it uh, it followed along the snow machine no problem 
Where you run into problems is if you're in rough terrain, a little bit of side hill, uh, hard, crusty snow, basically this direction, crossways across the ski. is going to work just about as much like a ski as lengthways. So you're not gonna have any directional stability on hard packed side hills. I don't know how well it'll show up in the video clips that we did, but I stopped in a trail that had a little bit of a a dish to it. I pulled off to the side to let someone pass me and the sleigh didn't want to track behind me. It wanted to fall down into the uh, the trough of the middle and really there was only about six inches difference between the high edge and the low center of the trail. So that's what these Hyfax runners that we're going to put on the bottom will hopefully take care of. Let me get you set up in a stand and we'll crack open this box and we'll start figuring out how we're going to mount them. These strips are 55 inches long and they come out of the package straight. Obviously we want them to curve around the front a little bit. We want the screws to uh, conveniently miss the cross members, which at the back here right now I'm sitting exactly on one. And ideally we would like the uh, screws to not land under the wheels. However, what we'll end up doing is uh, buzzing off any bolts that are too long and uh, run the risk of poking into a tire. Basically, what we're going to be looking at is doing something like that. I will measure and mark the, uh, the ski to get it in the middle. We'll start at the front. We'll put some heat onto the high fax, bend it over, and mount it the rest of the way down. The ski is exactly 13 inches, or the skin is exactly 13 inches, or three, 33 centimeters wide. So six and a half inches is the midpoint. And seven and a sixteenth looks like a good dimension for this side. A combination of my eyes not being the greatest anymore, and black marker on the bottom of black ski skin just doesn't work. So let me uh, throw a little tape down here. That will make lining things up so much easier. What I've done here is just kind of lay the, uh, the high fax on, measure back from the tip of the plastic, four inches, that seems like a good distance. That lines up that back hole so that it clears the, uh, the cross piece. In here you can see there's a cross piece and I don't really want to drill into that if I can avoid it. First step, the uh, holes in these high facts are not quite drilled all the way through. I'm using 3 16 of an inch drill bit for this. Seems like it uh, fits the screw quite nicely. And I will start at the front here, get it lined up with my marks. That was pretty easy. I'm thinking what we need to do is put the small washer under the head bolt, uh, bolt just to provide a little better resistance to pulling through the high fax. Put the large one on the inside of the ski skin and then snug down the nylock nut. The 3 16 hole that I put in is snug but it is functional. We've encountered a little problem. The original purpose of these uh, of these fasteners is to go through essentially a uh, roto molded or blow molded snowmobile sleigh, not this uh, 3 8 inch thick or 10 mil thick poly. So unfortunately, our fasteners that came with the high fax aren't going to cut it. I was a little worried about that. I do happen to have those. A very nice selection of more suitable stainless fasteners. Let's see if we can uh, use these without dropping them on the floor. The other advantage to this situation is that it uses Phillips head instead of using an Allen key. Let's put a little heat on the high fax, get it to flop over. Hopefully this piece of junk will work. It 
seems to be laying down pretty nice. I'm gonna drill a couple more holes here and we'll get it. We've got all of the uh, the bolts installed. The high fax seems to be down nice and tight. But as you can see, we got another step we got to do here. We got the uh, the grinder, although that flap disc is pretty well worn right out. But uh, what I want to do is at the ends here. I want to kind of bevel them a little bit. The front I don't think is that big of a deal, but the back is going to catch really bad here if we have to try and back up, and uh, we don't want that to have to pull through. So let me uh, plug the grinder in, put you guys on a stand, and we'll try and clean that up a bit. Nice little bevel. Hopefully that won't get hung up on anything whenever we back up. Front here we've got a nice little bevel. Hopefully if we uh, bump into a stick or something, if we're running in the bush or bump into a stump, but this won't get hung up, it'll just slide over. We've got one more thing that we need to do to this. On the inside here, you can see we've got a number of bolt stems sticking up. Up at the front here, I'm not too terribly concerned, but uh, if we're going to cut the rest of them off, we may as well cut them off. My big concern is that the tires, although I think the tires end up sitting on the cross members, so it's not that big of a deal, but my big concern is that one of these bolts is uh, going to grab the tire and wear a hole in it while you're going uh, across the snow. Now I've got all those bolt stems buzzed off of there. Hopefully we won't have any uh, tire issues while we're uh, using the skis. I'm not going to bother recording me doing the uh, the second ski because it's just a repeat of what we did here. And I'll bring you back when we get uh, these back on the sleigh and we're going to try doing some more running around and see if this fixes the minimal directional stability issues that we had. You'll notice as I go around the corner here that the back end gets a little bit loose on the sleigh, but this really is a chunk of ice that I just went across. It's not surprising. I think the carbides would have had a hard time biting. In this stretch of trail, I start doing a little bit of fishtailing back and forth here, and the sleigh just tracks perfect stays right behind the snow machine. I can't get it to uh, to break loose at all. This is uh, really impressed with how these runners hold the, uh, the skis down to the snow. Try a little bit of deeper snow just to see how it uh, handles it and I'm pretty impressed. My machine's very good in deep snow, it wasn't, uh, wasn't an issue. Definitely the skis do a good job of handling deep snow. Again doing some fishtailing back and forth and the uh, skis are just tracking perfect. Very impressed with how the runners turned out. Well guys, I think we'll call this one a success. And uh, thanks a lot for stopping by, checking this video out. Appreciate you. If you got this far in the video, can you throw me a thumb up, like, and maybe subscribe to the channel. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you in the next mess.